Oh, in that case, perhaps I may be so bold as to suggest myself. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Night Owl channel and welcome back to the series where we're counting down the top Dynasty Warriors characters out of the latest game. Coming in at number 21 we have Yue Jean. Yue Jean is a veteran general who served Cao Cao since he first raised an army. Reputed for his short stature and credited to be among Cao Cao's best vanguards, Yue Jean fought in many of Cao Cao's campaigns. At the Battle of Heifei he mediated between Quarling, Li Dian, and Zhang Liao and rescued both of them from Sun Quan's army. He is posthumously credited as one of the five generals of Wei. Before we jump into how Yue Jean has changed within the series and a little bit more on the character himself, let's take a look at the popularity polls to see why Yue Jean is all the way up here at number 21. In the first popularity poll, consisting of about 75,000 total votes, we have Yue Jin at the 37th position with 820 of those votes. And then in the second popularity poll, Yue Jin is going to jump up to the 32nd spot. And then in my personal rankings, Yue Jin is going to break the top 10 for me at the number 10 position. So for me personally, Yue Jin is at the number 10 spot because again, he's a character that I've always really liked and he has the qualities of a character that I've always enjoyed playing with. Being a very humble and courageous and, you know, just brave kind of person, Yue Jin is a character that I've always enjoyed playing. His weapon style is really fun, his appearance is really cool. Uh, Yue Jin was just a character when he was first introduced that I immediately was wanting to play right away because he looked like a character that was really cool. As we dive into his weapon styles and appearance, I'll explain a little bit more of that. But, but Yue Jin's been one of my favorites since he was made a playable character in Dynasty Warriors 8. So like I said, Yue Jin was a military general serving under the warlord Cao Cao in the late Eastern Han Dynasty of China, and he was noted as much for his short stature as for his valor and ferocity on the battlefield. This is actually a surprise to me because because I didn't really notice Yue Jin was that short. Like it never really came across or registered to me that he was a short character. But reading through the information about Yue Jin, that seems to be a really key point of the general Yue Jin. Apparently he was a really short general, but it didn't matter because he was able to compensate for that by being one of the most ferocious and courageous officers under Cao Cao. Yue Jin participated in most of Cao Cao's early military exploits and gained multiple successes in campaigns against Lu Bu, Liu Bei, the Yellow Turban Rebellions, and Yuan Shao. He is particularly praised as a capable vanguard, but his most fame accomplishment came with his supporting role in the defense of Heifei against Sun Quan's forces. And again, Yue Jin was regarded as one of the five elite generals. Being one of the five generals of Wei, Yue Jin obviously has some extremely prevalent accolades within Cao Cao's army. Reading through his information and what he did in history was pretty impressive to say the least. And as we go through his significant battles, we'll talk a little bit more in detail about each battle. But Yue Jin was a really cool character to play through. Like I said, I enjoyed him from the first game he was playable and he's always a character that I am drawn to play especially when he has the hook blades from Dynasty Warriors 8 so we're just going to jump right into his weapon style because I'm already talking about it so Yue Jin in the first game he's playable has the hook blade so the hook blades are a very intriguing weapon for me because they just look like a really cool weapon to use and as I played through the character I was right they have a hooking ability where you can kind of grapple the people and I just had a lot of fun with him as a character it matches him for who he is and it just fits him really well it's a very compatible style for Yue Jin and I had a lot of fun with that weapon style. In Dynasty Warriors 9 he gets the twin rods which also kind of fit him as well. Not as cool as the hook blades. It still fit him pretty well and even in Dynasty Warriors 9 they actually gave him some of the similar movesets of the hook blades into the twin rods so I can't really complain too much about the twin rods. I thought it fit him okay. I really hope they go back to the hook blades at some point for him because I always thought the hook blades were a really cool weapon. His Musao attacks in both of the games were really cool. They you know he maintains the exact same one. It's actually pretty impressive what his Musao 
Zalatag does. He like runs, does like a you know backflip in the air, spins around, and does tons of damage uh, with his Musao attacks. But I can't complain about his Musao attacks. They're pretty cool. And again, the character itself, the weapon style, the hook blades for me was the main draw for the character. He looked cool, of course, but the main draw for me is the hook blades. It's just a really fun weapon style. I love the grappling element with the hook blades. You know, you're hooking them and you know kicking them and stuff. And I really like that the weapon emphasizes the speed of UAG. Again, he was a smaller character, so he had to make up for it in other areas of his fighting style. So with the hook blades, he was actually a very quick character. A lot of his moves were very, very fast and it was like explosive. So that made up for, I guess, the character being short. But again, I didn't really notice it. I didn't really pay too much attention to how short Yue Jin was. And since we're already talking about let's go ahead and jump into his appearance. He's only got two changes, Dynasty Wars 8 to Dynasty Wars 9, and he looks fine in both games. I think he looks pretty sick. He's got the scars on him. He's got you know, obviously the muscles and the complementing armor on him to make Yue Jin Yue Jin. I think he looks really good in both games and can't really complain too much about the way UA Jean looks. Again, the, the short thing for me, I just never really noticed it. Now that the information that I read pointed out, now I can kind of see it. But I, you know, playing through the character, that was never really like anything that like stood out for me or would have deterred me from playing him. I just went about how he looked, what weapon he was given, and that was it. You know, how, how his personality is, how he handles things, and I've always enjoyed the character. Personality-wise, it's said that he had a slight inferiority complex regarding his short height and will often question his self-worth which I understand the latter part of it like he would question his self-worth there were a couple instances where he's like am I really worthy enough to be here kind of thing but when it comes to being on the battlefield he is extremely confident in his strength to compensate for those two insecurities that he has the height thing was never really a bother it, it never really seemed to come up like it was never obvious I don't think he's ever had a cutscene or he's never really mentioned how short he was you know it never really came up or anything at least to me I never noticed it I might have missed it in the games but I just never really noticed it within the games but UA Jean loves being on the front lines he loves doing what he can he loves filling in the position that other characters won't you know UA Jean by his own admission he doesn't even enjoy being kept in you know defending in a castle behind the walls he would much rather be fighting on the front lines and that's why in the games and you know in a lot of the historical information he's in the he's in the front he's in the vanguard he's the one that's charging into the fray you know raiding a certain location or initiating the battle or whatever it is like he's the one leading the charge and I find that very commendable from the character not a lot of characters are willing to step up and be the first one into the battle because it increases your chances of being killed right and that's why probably he has so many scars on him because he is the one that's charging into the battle head first and he has no fear of it and that's what I really like about the character he has no fear about fighting fairly and doing what he can to help his team if it means charging in front and doing the best he can to take down as many officers or you know troops or soldiers I mean he will do it and that's what I like about you Jean is a very reliable character is a very humble character regardless of the many accolades and achievements that he gets as a warrior he's still like am I still good enough am I still worthy enough of course it's a little bit of an insecurity that he has but it's still cool to see he's not too cocky he's never arrogant and it never sways him as a character he remains humble in his roots and I really like that about the character now moving on to his voice acting his voice acting is fine you know he's only going through two changes he's got his dynasty warriors 8 voice actor why me though Surely there are others more worthy. And then he's got the one in Dynasty Warriors 9. We have to defend Puffet Castle against 100,000 men? Is such a thing even possible? What do you think, Master Zhang Liao? I mean, the Dynasty Warriors 8 one is a little bit better, I guess. Uh, but the Dynasty Warriors 9 one is just fine. Can't complain about the voice acting at all. Uh, I just like the personality that the games allow him to have. Again, that humility and that self-righteousness as a person to do the best he can for his kingdom. That's all I need from the character, and that's why he's so high up for me. I, I've always really enjoyed characters like that. Him and Shu Huang and Tai Chi Si, very similar types of characters. Very humble, but very dangerous warriors. Now, moving on to a significant battles his relationships and his death start off with his battles because i kind of talked about it already so the most significant battles within the game is going to be the battle of guandu and the battle of hefei i would also say the battle of i believe it was the battle of jung ling which is the battle right after chibi so when sao sao loses and like his units get like spread apart i would say like a minor role in that just because he played a key part in allowing sao sao to escape uh, i believe he was holding down a castle and according to history yue jin was very successful in defending it against a lot 
lot of the Shu forces that were trying to get to Cao Cao. For example, he defeated Guan Yu twice while he was trying to get through the city that he was guarding and was thwarted both times by Yue Jin. And then later on, you know, Yue Jin finds out that, you know, Cao Cao's side, it's getting worse and worse for, you know, their team. He raises an army within that city or within the castle, and then he goes out, wins several skirmishes over Liu Bei's forces. I talk about the more important battles in the series and, of course, within history as well. We're going to talk about the Battle of Guandu. He played a big role in Guandu because he had a number of successful raids within the battle itself. Uh, he set fire to tons of camps, he killed thousands of enemies, and he captured several thousand men alive and forced them to surrender to Cao Cao. But the main thing I want to point out with Yue Jin in the Battle of Guandu is the fire of the Wu Chao supply depot. So according to history, Yue Jin was picked as the vanguard for this mission to take down the Wu Chao supply depot. He was given 5,000 troops of mainly cavalry, and under the cover of night, they were unopposed until they arrived to the enemy encampment, where they set fire to Yuan Shao supplies. The enemy general that always defends Wu Chao is the general Chen Yu Cheong. So Chen Yu Cheong attempts to fight back with his larger force, but he ends up getting slain by Yu Jin within the chaos. The success of that raid is what enabled Cao Cao to score a decisive victory over Yuan Shao's forces at the Battle of Guan Du. Now, I don't know if any of the games really go over it, but according to history, Yu Jin is the one responsible for setting Wu Chao on fire, which led to the decisive victory of Cao Cao over Yuan Shao. And then, of course, the last significant battle he has is going to be the Battle of Hefei. So the Battle of Hefei was a very important battle for Yue Jin because it is the one where him, Li Dian, and Zhang Liao stand up to Sun Quan's and the Wu forces, outnumbering them by a lot. Sun Quan would arrive with 100,000 men in order to capture Hefei. Yue Jin, Zhang Liao, and Li Dian only had a few thousand soldiers underneath them to defend Hefei. Now this battle is also the one that's indicating that Li Dian and Zhang Liao have some sort of disagreement during this battle and Yue Jin is the one that brings them together. I don't know if it's too evident within the games. I think there's a small event within Dynasty Wars 9 when it happens and then it's like briefly kind of mentioned or kind of hinted at in Dynasty Wars 8. It's not super evident but I know Li Dian definitely has some hostility towards Zhang Liao because Zhang Liao was the reason or one of the reasons that you know his uncle died and everything like that. So I definitely saw that. In history, it's not really specified why they don't like each other that much. Regardless, Yue Jin is the one there to mend them together. They come together as a group. They're able to defend Hefei from Sun Quan's forces, forcing him to retreat. But it was an extremely important battle for Yue Jin because not only did they overcome some pretty significant odds, but that's when the relationship between Yue Jin, you know, Zhang Liao, and Li Dian as a, as a trio solidify with each other. Now, moving on to his relationships. So, we kind of already talked about some of his big relationships. The main ones that he's going to have is with Li Dian and Zhang Liao, of course. But then I want to talk about a couple other minor relationships that he has. Of course, with Cao Cao. Very minor, but it's there. And then I also want to talk about with Cao Shu. I think he has a minor relationship with Cao Shu because when Cao Shu becomes a playable character in Dynasty Wars 9, they have quite a bit of interaction. You know, Cao Shu's always there within the conversation or the group setting, and they're kind of conversing a lot with each other. I think there's a minor relationship with Yue Jin and Cao Shu because they just seem to always be around each other. At least later on, when Cao Shu becomes a part of Cao Cao's forces and now, there are some moments between them, so I would say a minor relationship with Cao Shu. And then, of course, with Cao Cao, he's going to have a minor relationship as well. It's not super evident. They definitely have, like, the, you know, ruler and vassal relationship, but I, I don't think it's anything past that. I think Yue Jin's main relationships is with Li Dian and Zhang Liao, and the relationship he has with Cao Cao is definitely an appreciative one. Like, Cao Cao is definitely appreciative of how good Yue Jin is at what he does, but I don't think it's anything to where it's too personal. You know, Cao Cao definitely, again, respects and appreciates, but I think it's mainly a ruler and vassal relationship. And then, of course, finishing up with Li Dian and Zhang Liao. Out of those two, he's probably the closest with Li Dian. Like, Yue Ji and Li Dian are probably like a dynamic duo in the series. They both came in together, basically started at the same time. They're part of a lot of battles together. They ended up being paired up a lot and relying on each other and everything like that. And they have a very brotherly relationship. I would say that Li Dian is Yue Jin's most significant relationship because they share a lot of cutscenes together. They're always around each other. They definitely cherish and respect each other as officers under Cao Cao's forces. And and then bringing Zhang Liao into the mix, these three are going to have a very close relationship because Yue Jin actually looks up to Zhang Liao because of, you know, Zhang Liao's talent and strength as a warrior. So when Zhang Liao and Li Dian end up, you know, bickering and they're fighting and everything, Yue Jin's able to bring them both together because, first of all, they're getting, being attacked by a giant army from Sun Quan. And then two, he's able to bring those two together because he's friends and respects both of them. But very close relationship with Zhang Liao and Li Dian. Those are the trio at Hefei. Those three are the ones you have to deal with when you're attacking at Hefei. And of course, 
force and they are the reason that Hafei ends up not falling because of their effort in the battle and because of that battle they end up you know having a really close relationship and they end up becoming really really close I like the relationship he has with Li Dian and Zhang Liao it's really cool to see that dynamic that they have you know the reliability that they have all they all have on each other I mean Yue Jin, Li Dian and Zhang Liao all rely on each other in situations but that's pretty much it for his relationships we're gonna go ahead and jump into his death really quickly uh his death's not really mentioned at all there's no record of what happens to him it, I'm assuming old age or illness or something no one kills him or anything but he passes away eventually and that's pretty much it for UA Gene but that's all I really have for UA Gene here guys hope you guys enjoyed the video again he was a top 10 character for me when I made the list he might be a little lower next time I'm not too sure but I've always liked the character he's always been a really fun character to play as and I've always genuinely enjoyed who UA Gene is his look his weapon style his personality it's all a character that I would want on my team he's that kind of character I've always liked those kind of characters and UA Gene is no exception again the whole height thing was never really a bother or I just never really noticed it but apparently according to history UA Gene was mentioned to be one of the shortest adult males of his time again it just never really registered to me that he was a shorter character and for me that's not going to deter me from playing him if they give him back his hook blades in the next game it's going to be awesome I love those weapons a very fun play style but yeah guys that's all I have let me know what you guys think about UA Gene down below if you guys are a fan of him do you like him did you guys ever notice his height <laughs> but that's all I have guys if you enjoyed it definitely appreciate a like comment or subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching everyone Believe.